everybody, welcome to JC's Creek. My name is Emily, and today we are doing season 2, episode 22. So, before we dive into anything, I want to say that season 3 is coming out after this episode, so make sure you put on your post notifications and follow my Instagram, that's Blair and Potter, and my TikTok, that's Pacey and Joey. And this episode came out May 26, 1999. So, let's get into it. So, we have scene one of Joey. And we know that Joey is the main event in this episode. But she... So, to recap last episode, she saw some figured out that Joey's dad was doing marijuana with Pete. And then, last episode, Andy went away to a mental institution, well, not mental institution, I don't know if that's the right word, to an institution to get better, and Pacey had to say goodbye. So, it cuts to Dawson's room on a black and white, black and white film is playing, and Dawson shuts it off, and Joey said, hey, they're abrupt, and Dawson said, I had enough of unequivocal love for one evening, okay? It's just, it's too tolerant. And Joey says, I wonder what sick part of me thrills on movies with this kind of love stories. And Dawson says, the one that un ends unhappily. And Joey says, no, the ones that really never end. I mean, think about it. To include it loving someone, even though there's no chance that that means that, oh, that love ever thrilling about, yeah. Sorry. I mean, think about it. To continue loving someone even though there's no chance that love ever thriving, that's romantic. And Dawson disagrees and says, that's tragic. And Joey says, not a love story has a building of happy endings, Dawson. And Dawson says, but why relive the ones that don't? And Joey says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sad stories are just more powerful. I preferred them. So, Dawson does agree with Joey about this, but I agree with Joey on this. The ones that have happy endings are a great story, but it kind of has to build on, you know? You can't start a story from a happy start. Like, sometimes you have to have one of those starts that really make it hmm, sad. So, for example... And I'm going to include Pacey and Joey in this. So everyone was so sad about Pacey and Joey in prom. Understandably. I, I agree with you guys. However, I feel like when I watched that episode, I was so looking forward to the happy ending instead of the sad ending. Like, yes, that was a tragic ending. However, I knew that it was more, just more powerful than Dawson and Joey, although they kind of ended really powerful in this one and anyone else so with this story line Dawson and Joey obviously they have tragic endings all the time however Dawson says well when you think about it and Joey says speak and Dawson says do you think that kind of a preference has effect on your own love story and Joey says it does absolutely and Dawson says, and that doesn't worry you? And Joey says, no, because the effect is positive. It's the movies that like to remind us of how motivated, motivated and powerful love can be. So when we think about how prom was, Pacey walked over to Joey and he explained the situation. And everyone said, oh, how dare Pacey yell at Joey and makes Joey upset and embarrass Joey in front of the whole senior class but really Pacey was mature about it later but it was a sad ending and so with Dawson and Joey in this episode and they had their own sad ending it wasn't really one of those sad endings it was more like get out of your business kind of ending but it was kind of one of those things where I feel like Joey has those sad endings because it creates the happy endings so Dawson says but they don't end happily I mean, Daniel and Day leave it. Lewis never gets Michelle Viper. Joey says, it's not their fault, it's the circumstances. And Dawson says, but what good is their love if it's not strong enough to under overcome those circumstances? And Joey says, because of the spite of the circumstances, they never stop loving. And Dawson says, so tell me, Joey Potter. And she says, hmm? Will you, 
you always love me no matter the circumstances? And uh, Joey says, it doesn't matter. We get the happy ending. <laughs> Burn. So I feel like Joey said the right thing in this situation because they are 16. Like, they don't really know what kind of ending they're going to have. And I feel like when you're 16, you're so young. Like, I can't imagine him marrying my boyfriend. Like, if I had a boyfriend at 16, I can't imagine marrying him a long time later. Like, that was, like, we just grow as humans. And now, as I look back, I'm like, wow, that was, that was weird love right there. And that's kind of how Joey and Dawson are. Like, it was kind of like a childish love. And Joey can't say, like, yeah, I'll always love you no matter what. But it's one of those gloves where it's like, I don't really know what's going to happen. And who knows what the circumstances are going to be. So then we have scene two of Joey. And it cuts to Joey coming out of her house and Dawson standing there. And Joey says, hey, I need a minute. Good morning. And she kisses him. And Dawson says, morning. And Joey says, hey, do you have your review for geometry? I can't find mine. And Dawson says, I was counting on you. And Joey says, two minutes. And she goes back in the house and Mr. Potter Mr. Potter says, how's it going, Dawson? And Dawson says, good. Um, Mr. Potter says, ready for your exams? And Dawson says, I hope so. How about you? And Mr. Potter says, doing good. Doing really good. And Dawson says, and legal? And Mr. Potter just stands there very shocked at what Dawson just said. However, because Dawson knows that Mr. Potter is doing drugs again. And he's afraid that... Dawson will say something to Joey, but I don't think, I don't think Dawson would actually do that, even if he could. And Mr. Potter says, you know what, you guys, <sighs> you know what, you guys, since the ice house is closed for the last stages on the reveal, you can use, use it as a study of it if you want. Like, okay, I get why Mr. Potter wants Joey to use it as the ice house, but at the same time, I'm like, really, dude? Really, you're gonna you're gonna let your like kid use the ice house while you were selling drugs. So then Mr. Potter says, um, the ice house is closed for renovation. There's plenty of old menu items to eat up, which I don't really know like how old they are, but okay. And you can invite your friends. And Joey says, sounds cool, Dawson. And Dawson says, sounds good. And Joey says, thank you. I'll see ya. And she kisses him on the cheek. And Mr. Potter says, bye. And Dawson says, see you, Mr. Potter. And Mr. Potter says, see you, Dawson. And Mr. Potter stares up for them with the worry expression on his face because he's afraid Dawson will tell. So then we have scene one of Pacey. And it cuts to Pacey pulling in with pulling in and his dad, Pearl, Pearl Carr, which we never really see. And Pacey and his dad in any type of car. But he's driving and... Someone comes over the radio, and Pacey says, that's the ice house, and he says, are you st staking it out, and Mr. Witter says, that's none of your concern, and Pacey says, Pops, if this means you're going to start harassing Joey's dad, and Mr. Witter said, I'm not harassing anyone, I wear a badge, I do a job, and Pacey says, he's finally putting his life back together, the guy deserves a break, and honestly, um, I think Mr. Witter, like, arrested Joey's dad, and that's what happened, so that's why Pacey's more intense. And Mr. Witter says, I'll be the judge of that, and in the meantime, you gotta find all of you, now don't screw it up. And Pacey says, is there any possible way that your advice will ever be in a positive tone? And Mr. Witter says, I'm positive, you better not screw it up, and... <laughs> That, that to me, I would just be like, oh, okay, it slams the door. And Pacey says, geez, Dad, you know, it's really great that you have we have these talks every morning. And Pacey turns to get out of the car, but Mr. Witter grabs his arm very aggressively, may I say. And Mr. Witter says, since your little girlfriend left, your attitude has gone from bad to worse. And I don't approve of it. A girl is not worth it messing your life in up, you hear me? And... Um, I feel like because Andy was the only one that ever supported Pacey, that's why his attitude went bad. But Mr. Witter just thinks it because of, um, Andy, but he never met Andy. And 
Pacey says, may I go now, sir? And Pacey gets out and slams the car door shut and Mr. Witter drives off and Dawson walks up. And Dawson says, did he try and run you over with this car this morning? And Pacey says, well, as might as well, the bastard. And Dawson says, screw him. Have you heard from Andy yet? And Pacey says, no, I haven't. She'll call. And then it cuts to the, the finals. And... The guidance counselor says that you may raise your hand for any questions and he'll come. And then Pacey flips up in his books and scans the question and shuts it again and lays his head and starts staring off the space, which means Mr. Mile very concerned. So I feel Pacey when he like shuts the whole book and just like, eh, screw this. But I would always try just to get my grade a little bit up. But I feel like when Pacey... When Pacey's dad mentioned his attitude, I feel like that just made Pacey not want to do anything ever again. And I can understand that in the sense of, like, a teenager. Like, when your parents say, hey, your attitude sucks, like, you're like, well, screw you. I want to show you what sucks. That's kind of how Pacey was. So then we have this little scene of Mr. Potter and Dawson. So it cuts to Dawson walking in the back room of the ice house where Mr. Potter is sleeping. And this, Mr. Potter says, Dawson... I suppose you want to know what the hell I was doing. And Dawson says, no, not really. I just came to tell you whatever it is, and I don't believe it. I don't believe that a man who claims to love his children with all his heart and all his soul would traffic co cocaine through the family business. Which, I feel like, again, that's just... As a 16-year-old, I feel like that was none of Dawson's dang business, but he made it his own business. And Mr. Potter says, Dawson. And Dawson says, I don't believe that anyone engaged in the solid criminal activity would put the well of being of their family ahead of their own selfishness and remove themselves from the situation. And Mr. Potter says, and what if that man found himself stuck? Could you believe that? And again, like, Mr. Potter, we have talked about this. He is a drug addict, so it's not like it's going to be easy for him to completely stop and do what's the right thing. And Dawson has, like, this perfect little life going for him, and the worst thing that ever happened to him was Dawson's mom cheated, and then they got divorced. Like, obviously that's terrible, but at the same time, like, Dawson has no idea what addiction is, and he doesn't understand that Mr. Potter is just stuck in his own brain, and he needs rehab, and he needs someone to really like get on him and I don't know why they don't give him that ability but sadly they don't and Dawson says well if that were the truth then a smart man would do absolutely at his power for the sake of people who love him to unstick himself and do what is best and Dawson storms out which I don't know why Dawson just calls out this 40 year old man but somehow he does and it never really makes sense to me so then we see scene one of Pacey and Joey and it cuts to Joey, da Jack, and Dawson sitting at a table in the ice house. And Mr. Witter, like, Mr. Witter comes in and he asks Pacey what he's doing. And Pacey says, we're signing a Pete Trudy. And then, like, he goes, studying, pop, studying. I mean, he has, like, all these books out. Like, what do you think he's doing? And Mr. Witter says, Joey, is your father around? And Mr. Potter comes out and he says, hello, John. Which, I saw that so formal. Restaurant, restaurants close. And Mr. Witter says, hello, Mike, can I speak to you for a second? And Mr. Potter says, sure, come on back. Which, I'm sure he has drugs back there. And Mr. Witter walks back there and as soon as he is out of earshot, this is like the first time that we really see Joey and... Pacey talk other than that episode um where they throw pa like Dawson a surprise party and she leans over to Pacey like he knows what the heck is going on and says what's going on and Pacey says hey don't look at me my father's cruiser are his own deal because of what happened earlier that's why Pacey said that and then it cuts to the back room where Mr. Witter says hey Mike how's it going and Mr. Potter says good you and Mr. Witter says good and he pulls out a picture of Pete and says, have you seen this guy? And Mr. Potter says, Pete Leslie, he's an old friend. And Mr. Witter says, with an allied history of new, new regrets, Mike. And Mr. Potter says, well, I wouldn't know that. We have a strictly social relationship. 
and he stopped by for a visit earlier, and Joey gets up and walks over to the room, and Joey says, Find everything you need, Mr. Litter? And Mr. Litter says, Yes, thank you. Which, I don't know why Mr. Potter would say, Oh, yeah, like, he came over early. Like, that's not what you should have said. And Joey says, Need any more help back here, Dad? And Mr. Potter looks at Mr. Litter, and Mr. Litter says, No, we're done. This is, place is looking great, Mike. And Mr. Potter says, thanks. Come on back next week when it's done and I'll give you a free dinner. And Mr. Witter says, thanks, I'll do that. And he leaves and Joey asks what was going on. And Mr. Potter says, he's giving me an official welcome. That's all, Joe. And Joey says, when are they ever going to leave us alone? And Mr. Potter says, not for a while. Which, Mr. Potter, you're selling drugs. They're not going to leave you alone ever. And... Joey says, um, well, I guess we'll have to ignore them. And Mr. Potter smiles and walks off and Dawson walks in. And Dawson asks if he, Joey's okay. And Joey says, why is Pacey Dad doing this? And Dawson says, it's his job. And Joey says, no, it's his job to serve and protect from criminals, not my dad. And he doesn't belong in that category anymore. And Dawson made this face, and jo he says, I know you're mad. And Joey says, you should be mad too. You're part of the family now, which I don't know why she says now, but okay. And Dawson says, well, when you say it like that, I'm furious. And Joey kisses him. But obviously Dawson was trying to, like, say what was going on, but sadly he couldn't. And the second thing, I feel like Mr. Witter knew what was going on. And lastly, I feel like when Joey says, like, it's his job to protect and serve, I feel like he was protecting and serving, but at the same time, he wasn't because Joey thinks that Mr. Witter it, or Mr. Potter is innocent. However, he is not because he's selling drugs at the moment. So then we see scene two of Pacey and Joey. In this episode, ooh, that's this one's intense. And so it cuts to... Mr. Potter opening like these bags full of cocaine and he takes them to the office and he shuts the blind while Mr. Wetter and Pacey are walking towards the like his pearl car and Mr. Wetter tells Pacey to stay out of it you have a whole another problem to deal with and Pacey says of course I do and Mr. Wetter says today you got a phone call at school and Pacey you got a phone call at home and Pacey says, Andy, and his dad says, Mr. Milo, he's worried about you. He told me that you blew out two of your exams. And Pacey says, I got it on control, okay? And Mr. Witter says, Pacey, you didn't say, he said you didn't write one word on either exam. That's profusious. What are you thinking? And Pacey says, I was thinking that it didn't really matter, okay? And Mr. Witter says, the hell it doesn't. You get your things and you're coming home. And Pacey said, no. And Mr. Witter says, I don't, I don't want you hanging out here, Pacey. Mr. Potter is a known felon. It doesn't look good on me. So I feel like when Pacey's dad says this, it's like, you didn't care about your son at all throughout the 2021, because he's in one of those episodes, 21 episodes of season one or season two, you didn't care about your son at all. And add on to those facts of 13 episodes where you didn't, we weren't even in those because you didn't care about your son. And he tells, he tells Pacey to get his stuff. And Pacey says, I said no, because he's standing over. And he like grabs Pacey's arm while he says, get your stuff. And Pacey says, get your hands off me. And that's when Pacey's dad punches him. So obviously there's child abuse going on here and I see a lot of fan fictions where they make it like Pacey's dad's abusing Pacey which makes sense because a lot of the scenes that we do see Pacey's dad or we hear about Pacey's dad we understand where Pacey's like his mindset is and I feel like this is where one of his mindset is because now Pacey has to deal with this and Mr. Witter says I'll be in the car and then Pacey's just left standing there with a black eye. And I feel bad for Pacey in this scene because we only see this part, but we see how now Andy's gone and his dad's back. And it's not one of those happy ending episodes. It's one of those episodes where it 
sucks for Basie because he has to deal with his dad and he has to deal with everything that goes on with his dad and now he doesn't have the love of his life because his love of his life had like this whole anxiety like hallucination attack and it sucks for him because why why should he have to deal with this and then it cuts to Mr. Potter opening his blinds and seeing a fire and there was like a big whole explosion and he grabs his drugs and he rushes over to the toilet and starts opening them and pouring them and flushing them down the toilet and then there's like the group who is just sitting there having no idea what's happening and Dawson's like does anyone smell that and Jack says smoke and Jen asks where it's coming from so then it goes on by Joey looking back behind the door and Joey says there's a fire and she gets up and she runs towards the smoke and Dawson says Joey and Joey says dad and it cuts to Pacey and his dad by the parole car and Pacey says dad dad and he points to the fire where Mr. Woodard gets his radio as Pacey runs in and everyone's in this fire and Dawson's screaming, careful, careful, Joey's screaming, dad, dad, and Mr. Potter's screaming, Joey, get out of here, and Joey is screaming, dad, while Pacey, <laughs> we love this scene, while Pacey grabs Joey, and he drives her out of the fire, leaving Dawson to be the hero, but I feel like there's two sides of this, because you can see Dawson as a hero when he grabs Joey and he makes like her get out or like grabs Joey and makes her grab out while Dawson was like putting the fire out and all this different kind of stuff but I think the real hero was when Pacey dragged her out because it wasn't those things where like he knew like if she didn't get dragged out of that fire then she would die and he cared about her enough to do that and Joey's screaming and Dawson uses the signature and Dawson says I can't get in there stay back and Miss and Dawson breaks the window and Mr. Witter and Dawson get Mr. Potter out so before I continue with this I want to say that there is a fan fiction that I'm going to link down below and I think it's called Ashes to Ashes or something and it's about this whole like scene where um it's a it's a Pacey and Joey story, but Dawson, her Joey's dad, and Pacey's dad all die in that fire. They make it out alive, but it was one of those things where they had to deal with it, and Pacey and Joey grow more closer because of it. I read it. I listened to it like a couple of times. I listened to the stories rather than get yeah, like read it because I feel like it's more intense when I listen to it. I can listen to it like anywhere I go. Um, Dawson, it cuts to Mr. Witter watching the ice house being put out by the firemen because, oh, okay, so Mr. Witter and Dawson get Mr. Potter out and it cuts to Joey, Pacey, Jen, and Jack waiting outside and we see Joey and Pacey holding hands and they're just waiting for this fire while Jack and Jen hold hands. And it's one of the cutest things I will say in season two where we have Joey and um, Pacey because I feel like them two really do care about each other without the scene. And it cuts to Mr. Witter watching the, oh, and then it cuts to Mr. Witter leading the way while Mr. Potter and Dawson run out and Joey runs up and hugs her dad and Dawson stares coldly, very coldly, at Mr. Potter and he, while well, he coughs off smoke. And then it cuts to Mr. Potter watching the ice house being put out by firemen and Dawson asks, is this your idea of taking care of things? Which, again, he's an addict. And Mr. Potter says, it's not that easy, Dawson. And Dawson says, you need to go to the police and tell them everything you know. And Mr. Potter says, I can't, it's too dangerous. And Dawson says, this is too dangerous. And Joey walks up and leans her shoulder on her dad. And Joey says, I'm all checked. They ask for the hero next, and she goes to Dawson. And she's like, that'll be you. And Dawson says, I'm no hero, Joey. And Mr. Potter says, don't be modest, Dawson. You saved my life, you're a hero. 
And Dawson says, some situations are too tragic to have a hero. This is one. And he kisses Joey on the cheek. And his parents run up, and obviously that's what happened. And Joey's completely confused by everything that happened. So I feel like with Dawson, he's trying to be that hero hero. Like, that's not really a hero, but it's one of those tragic stories. But I feel like he really failed at it because... Dawson was a hero in Joey's eyes, but she had no idea what was coming next. So then we have scene two of Pacey, and it cuts to Mr. Wetter and Pacey talking inside. And Mr. Wetter said, that bastard was lying to me. He was in it to the neck and he knew it. And Pacey says, come on, you don't even know if anything happened with him. And Mr. Wetter said, a random assault incident in the middle of Cape Side. Let's consider the chances, Pacey. If God... God haven't blessed me with my good looks, I would wonder whose son you were. Why you drive yourself home before you make an another embarrassing comment? And Pacey says, I think I'll walk. And Mr. Witter says, as if I care. And Pacey says, no one assumed you did, Pop. And Mr. Witter says, you have, you have to excuse my, boy, my son, boys. His girlfriend moves and all of a sudden his time of the month shows. And Pacey says, screw you, okay? And Mr. Witter grabs Pacey's arm very aggressively in front of the other cops and Pacey quickly removes it and says get your hands off me don't ever touch me again ever and Mr. Witter says finally my boy's got a pair and all it took was his heart broken by some girl with a few screws of gloves and that made Pacey very defensive of Joey and he punches his dad in the face and says, Andy did more for my life in six months than you ever did in 16 years. You rot, you rotten son of a bitch. So if you ever want to make me feel bad, if you ever want to bust on me, that's fine. But if you so much leave a suspended comment about the woman I love, you're going to be policing from a hospital bed, you hear me? And one more thing, even if Mr. Potter was involved, he's still ten times the father you ever were. Clap, clap, clap for Pacey. Amazing. Yes, go Pacey. I agree with Pacey on this because I love I love a few things. I love how he defended Andy throughout this whole thing. And I love how he was like, Mr. Potter's a better father. Because he knew like Mr. Potter was more emotionally involved than Mr. Wooder was. And whether that was just genetics or what happened, whatever happened to Mr. Wooder, <laughs> it must have been a random childhood or something because Mr. Witter has some problems. The fact that he punched his own son and then later Pacey punches him, that just shows it. He just goes off and again this goes on for what I said earlier when I say Pacey speaks his mind. Pacey doesn't just say, he doesn't just like let it go. He says what he says and he says what he means. And he tells him to not leave his hands off him ever again. Which I feel like was a very good scene for him as well. So then we have scene three of Joey and it cuts to Bessie and Mr. Potter sitting at the Potter kitchen talking and Joey walks in and Bessie says, there's no reason that if the inspector comes out tomorrow, we can't file a claim. It's, it starts protocol. And Joey asks what comes, what's going on and Mr. Potter says, your sister and I are going through the insurance paper. And Joey says, no, I mean with the police. Why did the ice house taped off? And Mr. Potter said, the fire was a arrest related. It's typical eviction protocol. And Joey says, so there's nothing going on. And Bessie says, Joey, what are you saying? And Joey says, I'm asking dad if he knows anything why are the police interested in the fire and why there was a fire in the first place and mr potter says as god is my witness i have no idea and joey says you're positive and bessie says josephine potter you stop it right now and joey says no i want him to swear and mr potter said i just swore to you joey and joey says i know i need you to swear again i need to know that you're telling the truth do you did you start that fire and mr potter says no and Joey says, okay. And then she's more relaxed and they hug. Mr. Potter just lied to his, her da like his daughter. And Bessie was like, don't, don't do that. Like, don't accuse him. But I feel like, again, Bessie's such like out of the known of everything that she doesn't really know what to think about her dad. And it's more like Joey's more concerned about her dad than anything. 
So then there's a little side note with Dawson, and it cuts to Dawson sitting with his parents at the kitchen table. And Mitch says, there's no question you have to go to the police. And Gail says, honey, who, whoever these mans are, Joey's dad is dealing with. If they're capable of burning down the building, then they're capable of much worse. And Dawson says, I realize that, but how, how do I do this to Joey? I mean, she finally gets her family back, and I'm the one that's going to tear it away from her. And Mitch says, Joey's father is responsible here, not you. And Dawson says, what if, what if I just give him some time? Maybe things will change. And Mitch says, that man just got out of prison less than a month ago. And he already committed the same crime that laid him in the first place. And Dawson says, I just wish I never saw what I saw. And Gail says, there's a reason what you did. And Joey's in danger and she needs your strength. Even if strength doesn't come your way, that's what she wants. And Mitch says, you need to go to police. There's nothing else what to say. And Dawson says, there is one. And he gets up. So I feel like with Dawson, he kind of should have stayed out of this business. But Dale and Mitch were right that this could have ended much worse. And Joey could get hurt. So I feel like they were very right on this. But also, I always say, like, it wasn't Dawson's business at the same time. But he saw what he saw and he needed to say it. So then we have scene four to Joey where it cuts to Joey sitting by herself on the lawn chairs by the creek and Dawson walks up and Dawson says, hey, and Joey says, hey, you called? And Dawson says, yeah, um, what if I tell you, what I'm going to tell you, you're not going to like, so I'm going to say it really quickly. Joey, your father is still in drugs again. And Dawson, and Joey says very defensively and angry and Joey says, you don't know that. And Dawson says, yes, I do. I caught him. And that's not all. The, this fire tonight was not all, but perfectly his responsibility. I talked to him about it. I talked to my parents about it. I didn't want to hear, from, hear it from me because I didn't want you to know, but now it's gone too far. And Joey shakes her head, and she says, He told me he had nothing to do with that fire. He swore to me. And then Dawson says, He's lying to you. And Joey says, I, Well, I didn't believe him. And Dawson says, I know you want to believe him. And Joey says, no, no, I do. And Dawson says, Joey, why would I lie about this? And Joey says, what? why are you doing this? And Dawson says, because you need to know the truth, all right? This is a very dangerous situation right now. If your father could have prob probably this responsible, who knows if we went to the police and maybe you can work something out with your dad. Okay, so I have a few things to say on this. Why didn't he get... Why didn't he tell Bessie? Um, he should have sat, like, all three of them down and said, and even his parents, and just talked to Mr. Wooder, Bessie, and Joey. And said, hey, I know what I saw, and this is going to sound really bad, but Mr. Potter, you know what you did, and you need to tell your girls. But instead, he was, like, telling Joey about this. And he wants Joey to turn in his own father. And... Joey says, what kind of person do you think I am? Why are you doing this? And Dawson says, Joey, this is not your fault. And Joey says, yes, it is. And Dawson says, there's no other option. There was plenty of other options. And Joey says, you couldn't keep me well enough alone. You had to get involved. And Dawson says, Joey, I love you. I'm not letting you risk your life to protect someone. And Joey says, Dawson, this is my father. I am begging you to stay out of this. And Dawson says, I can't. And Joey says, yes, you can. I mean, not just for me, but for my family's sake, but for us. I'm telling you, Dawson, we won't survive from this. And Dawson says, that's the risk I'm taking because I care more about you than I care about myself. And someone has to do the right thing. If you can't, then I will. So I feel like he did the right thing, but also I feel like he didn't. And Joey leaves, like, kind of angry. But I feel like when you really think about it, it was hard for Dawson to say that. But he should have, like, sat Joey down with the police or sat Bessie down with the police rather than turning in her own father like I feel like that was the wrong thing to do and the next scene that we have is where Joey Dawson and Dawson's parents are in Mr. Witter's office so the man that turned in Mike Potter is standing right in front of him and Mr. Witter says if I had to wait until I've had enough proof to arrest your father then he is going away for life and Joey says you don't even have proof and then then why am I going along with this? And Mr. Witter says, Joey, the men who tipped me off to your father doing are his companions. They are also responsible for that fire last night. If your father doesn't help me get them, then they're going to help 
they're going to help me until I get him. And Joey says, you have no, you guys have no idea what you're asking me to do. And Mr. Reuter says, he's putting your life, your family in entire danger. And Joey says, well, yeah, it's my family, Mr. Reuter, and my benefit is trusting together. And Mr. Reuter says, don't you think that your father is betrayed by that trust? And Joey says, right. I think I trust him a lot more than I trust you. And Dawson says, you know what, could you give us a couple minutes alone? And Mr. Reuter nods and at him and Dawson's parents get up and Dawson says he wants to help and Joe he cares we all do and Joey says I appreciate the concern Dawson but what I want what I don't appreciate is the solution forced my down my throat and Dawson says I tried to talk to your father and Joey says that's just it you tried but he's not your father Dawson it doesn't matter if he goes off to prison for the rest of your life does it and Dawson says that's why I came to you. And Joey says, yeah, with the decision you already made. And Dawson said, I, and Dawson says, Joey, I wish there was another option, but there is one. You understand that. And Joey says, I understand, Dawson, that a world in black and white and what you live in, you don't even have the choices. But that's not my world. I see in gray and I see and it makes us different. And the part that falls in love with you and it's tearing us apart. And she walks out of the room and Dawson rubs his hands through his hair like he does whenever he's frustrated. And Dawson said there's no, like, other way. But there was plenty of other ways where he could have, like, helped Joey. He could have, like, got Bessie, like I said. Or, like, sat down with Mr. Wonder and Mr. Potter and Bessie and Joey and Dawson's parents. And Dawson, like, there was other ways to do this. So then we see scene three of Pacey. And it cuts to... Pacey leaning against the rail by the water, and Mr. Witter walks up, and Pacey says, What are you doing here? And Mr. Witter says, Well, for starters, you punched me. And Dawson says, If you come for an apolo apology, you're barking up the wrong tree. And Mr. Witter says, No, I don't want one. I deserved it. And Pacey looks confused because he's never heard his father say this. And Mr. Witter says, Good for you for doing that. You got another phone call from him today it was andy we talked for a long time and she's a uh, kind of chatty that one and pacey said she sure is and mr witter says she sounds sweet as hell pacey so sorry what i said yesterday i really don't know anything about her and pacey says apology accepted and he starts to walk away but mr witter says no i'm not done as little as i know her i know even less about my own son i realized that as andy was trying to fill me on and what was happening with you two when you gone through and Pacey looks like he's like on the like edge of tears right there and Mr. Witter says I don't I didn't know about any of that she said you were a hero that was nice to hear anyway I call your school and I explain everything to them and they said that they were gonna let you make up finals next week when you fill out to it and Pacey says thank you and Mr. Witter says it's the least I could do I'm sorry I'm not that kind of father you feel you could share this story with and then a single tear just runs down Pacey's face and Mr. Witter says and just another thing Andy wanted me to give you this and this is literally the best scene of the whole season two where Mr. Witter hugs Pacey and Pacey just starts crying and he throws his hands and Pacey says oh god I miss her so much I miss her so much it's killing me pops and Mr. Witter says I know you do son I know you so obviously this doesn't change as much with Pacey and his dad. Like it was basically the whole same thing throughout his whole teenager life. And we see like in season six where six where this kind of changes again. But it's obvious that it was one of those things that meant a lot to him and obviously nothing ever changed, but it was one of those scenes where you kind of get emotional because you know how he's feeling in that moment. He finally got, I am proud of you. That was that was Mr. Witter's way of saying, I'm proud of you. He wasn't actually going to come out and say it, but that's what we've been looking for for that the whole season two. And we finally got that moment. And it was one of the best moments in the whole entire season. <laughs> so then we have scene six of Joey. And it cuts to Mr. Potter and the Potter living room looking at a picture of Joey with her mother and Joey walks in stiffly and slowly and it literally looks like she's holding a gun but she's just having her recorded 
And Joe says, Dad. And Mr. Potter says, Jelly, where'd you run off to this morning? I cooked you breakfast. And Joey said, what's up with the police? And Mr. Potter says, oh. And Joey says, are you dealing drugs again? And Mr. Potter starts crying and nod, like nods his head. And Joey starts crying and Joey asks why. And Mr. Potter said, I wish I had an answer for you. I wanted to prove to my family not to just survive but provide. I thought that I made an extra little money get here and there and maybe we'll have a chance for us. And Joey says, yeah, but you served your time. You're supposed to get a new life. And again, if they put Mr. Potter in rehab, maybe this would have changed. But sadly, they did not put him in rehab, obviously for the TD part. But why Why didn't that show? Like, sadly, they didn't progress this co like coming up. But I knew that this was a big like end to season two, and that's why they did it. And even in like, season five, well, season six, Mr. Potter comes back. And he just randomly pops up again. Like, that's not how it works. He should be in rehab and stuff. And Mr. Potter says, uh, I want to, Joey, but I am i don't understand that with a burden, I feel. And Joey says, we are a burden? And Mr. Potter says, no, you girls are a gift. The burden was the self actions Ever since I moved back here with you, I've been haunted by the knowledge that I failed you. And Joey says, then why didn't you tell me this? But we could have found a way. We could have done something. And Mr. Potter says, I was too weak, Joey. And again, this is alcoholism right there. And he tries to touch her, but she pulls away. And Mr. Potter says, I have been up all night after night wondering if it complied to take the road both ways. And I don't have an answer for you. And Joey says, but I trusted you and you lied and ruined everything. Bessie and I worked so hard for her. I mean, we could have died in that fire and it would have been your fault. Which is very true. And Mr. Potter says, I know, I know, and I hate myself so much for it. The way that Mr. Potter says it in this episode was so emotional. And the way Joey looked was just, oh, it breaks my heart. And he says, I don't know. I didn't know. I thought I could fix this. All I want to say is I'm so, so sorry. And Joey, like, somehow stops her tears and she says, I'm sorry. I took care of it for you. And she reveals that she's been wired. And she looks at her dad with tears and she says, I'm so sorry. And Mr. Potter says, don't be. So, again, the fact that Joey had to, like, tell like on her dad and Dawson couldn't find a different situation that makes me so angry and then we have scene seven of Joey where it cuts to Mr. Potter and Joey walking out of the house and he turns back and looks at Joey and he walks towards the pearl car past Bessie who Bessie looks like she's crying and he gets in the pearl car and Bessie walks towards the house and up the stairs and looks at Joey and keeps walking and then Joey looks over to find Dawson standing there, and she slowly walks towards him. And Dawson, I can't believe he asked this question. How are you feeling? Like, like, what do you think she feels? And Joey says, like, hell. And Dawson says, is there anything I could do? No. Like, you think there's something you could do after you told Joey to tell on her dad? And Joey says, no, thank you. And Dawson says, you did the right thing, Joey. And Joey says, no, Dawson, you did the right thing. What I did, the words doesn't even come close. And Dawson says, we both did what we thought we had to do. That's, that's not what happened. And Joey says, what I have to say, you're not going to like. So I'll say it quickly. I hope one day I'll be able to forgive my dad for all of this. And I don't know if I'll ever forgive myself. But I know that I will never forgive you. See, Dawson, there are certain certain circumstance that love cannot overcome and from now on i don't want to know you and she turns it goes to her house and dawson is stood there shocked and heartbroken because the love of his life just said that to him but you literally you literally just turned in mr potter and you don't give a crap and you asked how she's feeling like what kind of what kind of sick move is that how are you feeling like what <laughs> what and Dawson quietly says, see you, Joey. And that's how season three ends. Whew. Like, that whole season was just long and dragging. I'm so happy we're done with it. Because there's, like, barely any scenes 
with like Joey and Pacey. However, there is a lot of scenes where I see so much growth with Pacey. So much growth. And we finally got Mr. Witter's approval. But then we don't see any growth between Joey and Dawson. Like they were in the same position as they were in season one. But this time it was a lot worse. And finally, I don't understand why Mr. Potter didn't go do a rehab. Like what the heck? And I bet Bessie was mad, but like there was no point in Bessie being mad because Dawson should have done the right thing and come to Bessie, who was older and not 16. <laughs> like there was a lot of things that Pace, that Dawson could have done. Like he could have got Gail to go to the police or Mitch to go to the police, but no, he had to get Joey to go to the police. So then we had the top five saddest best moments of Pacey or Joey of season two. So that's what we're gonna go over for the last part. And top one was the saddest moment with Doc, with Joey and her dad. So I already discussed it. Like I don't understand why Dawson told Joey to tell on her dad. Like she even said, like I will forgive you. I will forgive my dad, and I don't don't think I will ever forgive myself, but I know I will never forgive you. And I love how she just quotes Dawson, like, I'm going to say it quickly. Like, okay. So then the second saddest moment was with Pacey and Andy. So I feel like with Pacey and Andy, it was one of those things that I didn't really know how to cover that episode. I was very tense throughout the whole entire episode because it was an Andy episode rather than a Pacey episode. But I feel like because... And he did so much for Pacey, she, he had to repay her in a lot of ways, he felt like. But I feel like it changed Pacey's mood in this episode and last episode because he was struggling with Andy and he was struggling with what it was going to be. And obviously it's going to cut into season three, so we're not going to discuss too much of it. But I know that it changed Pacey in a lot of different ways. So then... The top three saddest moments was with Pacey and Jack. I feel like this was one of the saddest moments because he... I love this episode because it really showed how Pacey says what he needs to say and he doesn't back down with what he had to say. He knew what was right and he stood up for his right. And he knew that it wasn't going to be easy, but he did it because he needed to be... It needed to be done. So then my top four with Pacey and Joey, this a whole episode with, I believe it was episode nine, with the seatbelt episode. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, where he gives Joey the seatbelt. That was just a small scene, but we know that it was a good scene because it was a Pacey and Joey moment. And then the top five was with Dawson and Joey, where Dawson gets his face smashed into the cake. I, I had to add that one because it was just pretty funny to me. And I believe that this, I would rate this season, I would rate season one like a 7 out of 10. And I would rate season two a little bit, like, I don't know. I would rate season one like a 9 out of 10 because there was a lot more scenes with Pacey and Joey, but I would rate, um, and there was a kiss involved, but I would rate this season probably 7 out of 10. And it was one of those seasons that we really saw a lot of growth. We saw them, like, Joey fall in love, we saw Pacey fall in love, and they broke it off at the same, around the same time, but we know that it will come into season 3 and how Pacey and Joey go along with each other and how everything comes up. So, if you want to catch on to season three, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, put on those post notifications for season three. And I'm really, really excited for the next season. I've been working on it for like a week or so. And I cannot wait to hear you guys' opinions on this episode or the season. And I cannot wait for season three because I am just, I am just dying to know what other people's opinions are on this. I feel like it's such a good season coming up and we're going to love it. We're going to cherish it. So if you like this episode, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel where I will be hosting every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. 
and I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to follow my Instagram, Twitter, and Potter, and my TikTok, Pacey and Joey. And I'll catch you next time. Bye, guys.